Hey everybody, welcome back in the shed. I'm Troy Shaw and with me is Dave. How's it going, Dave? It's good. We're literally back in the shed after the last two of sitting out on the patio because it was so freaking hot in the yeah. shed. But um, man, we got something that came through and it's nice. Cold front came in this morning and uh, I'm liking it. Hopefully I'm, it'll stay I'm ready. like this. Yeah. <laughs> We're recording this on October 7th and a Friday and uh, cold front came in this morning. When I left for work, it was it was hot. It was humid this And morning, I went to yeah. Starbucks, <laughs> got me some coffee, and walked out, and it was cold. <laughs> what the hell? Well, you guys were up too early for me. Yeah. <laughs> we had to go to work, man. So uh, our guest today is Devad Nedlow. There you go. Nedlow. <laughs> so, Welcome. Hey, how's it going? How are you doing, man? Excrement. <laughs> Came all the way from the big city of Lano. Lano, Texas, yes, sir. So, what what made you? You were born and raised in Waco, and uh, what made you move to Lano? Well, my father, whenever he decided he was going to retire, my, that's where my stepmom was from. That's where she grew up. Was born and raised. So they took a trip back there, and you know it's antique town and fit Lano's for, fit beautiful, for, and fit awesome. for old people. So they were like, you know, we're going to go ahead and buy a house and retire. <clears throat> They spent all their money, and now they're both working again. Is there much? Is there any kind of a music scene there in Atlanta, or do you actually? You, in all honesty, do you venture yeah. out to other? Fre- you got Fredericksburg right down the way, so Lukenbach is there. I mean, so that place is like, I mean, it's full of music constantly. There's tons of people there. Kerrville is just as popular. Brady, I mean, you got that. Uh, there's a little TV show that's filmed out there. There's a little country deal that they do out there. Um, that's that Jim Reeves bus is out there. The Country Music Hall of Fame is in Brady. So I mean, there's actually like a, it's a small, small scene, but and I you're mean, not and you're not too far from Austin. Do you ever do you ever get to Austin and play anything down there? Man, I don't. Me and Austin don't get along. <laughs> <laughs> just, you're not the first. Person. Just due to the fact that I have to pay bills with with this money that I make doing this. Like, it, you know, you go to Austin and they just want to pay you like you know per person that comes in the door at that time for you, and you walk out with like twenty five dollars. Yeah. Basically pays for my gas. Yeah, if that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you were you were uh, you grew up here in Waco uh, with a guy named Waco. He was your bass player he for, was, for yeah. a while. What, whatever happened to Waco? Waco lives in uh, Mississippi. He's actually works on one of those gambling boats. You know, he plays all the jazz music. Yeah, in the Mississippi. Yeah. Right. right. He's in, living in Biloxi. So he's a professional musician then. Yeah, pretty much. That's cool. <laughs> so. Um, Going back to your teenage years, it's, it's kind of when I met you, you were like 15, 16 years old. And uh, I, I th- at that time, it was sort of grunge and that kind of hard rock scene. Is that is that, would you consider those your inspiration or is it yeah, classic was, rock or is that, it a combination of everything? I, I would say more like, you know, Nirvana, you know, Bush, that, that whole grunge era that came out during the, you know, mid 90s, late 90s. That that molded me as far as learning learning how to play, putting songs together, song structures, you know, chorus, verse, chorus, you know, or vice versa, however you want to do it, you know, chorus, first chorus, first chorus, or whatnot. That that pretty much was the building blocks of my songwriting, you know, where where I got it all from. I, mean, I was talking with Dave earlier, and he was mentioning like Jeff Beck and was well, yeah t- Eric Johnson, yes, yeah, so like t- was it a Tucker, some dude named Tucker, and this yeah. Doyle. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about. Uh, well, we were talking about. I don't know any of these guys. Like, Dave, yeah, yeah, Dave, Dave's fun. old, man. So he, <laughs> yeah, I'm I don't. Old. I don't know any of these. Uh, but but I, that, I, I mean, they're awesome guitar players, from what he's saying. And you know, it's like I guess I should know them. I mean, it's kind of history, right? Yeah, hey, I'm a Zeppelin guy, so Zeppelin. you know. Um, yeah, and it, you know that's that's what really got me rocking. Was I guess probably in the early '70s and mid '70s when I got turned on to Zeppelin, probably about '75. And, after they'd already recorded, you know, up to Houses of the Holy and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, we all kind of relate to the time we came up in. And, you know, you came up, you know, when, after Nirvana got started. And and I was definitely into them when they came out and, and Pearl Jam and, yeah, that's and one all, of my those, all the Seattle right bands out of there. You know, they're, they, they were, that was, that's what the scene and thank God they came out when they did because Troy's from that era and he likes all that shit. A lot of bands, band, that, I, band stuff. that I fucking don't like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's cool because we we like a lot of the same stuff. You're a hair band guy, right? Uh, well, you know I grew up in that time, so I mean I like I, like, I still I remember like some jamming of it. some shout at the devil with you and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I uh, 
I diverge at that point. <laughs> I, and I still like some of it now, but most of it, yeah, it's pretty pretty much crap. <laughs> yeah, you know, That's Poison like, Warren, all those all those kind of bands. I'm not really, but I can still dig some Rat. Well, you know what? It's some Guns I, and Roses. I had just you ought to get your tickets now because I just read that. Piercy and we Warren D. Martini are getting back together and they're going on to it. So again, I, well, you know they their yeah, pockets they're, must they're be back there. Crosby's <laughs> not going to be there, I don't think. Obviously, yeah. yeah. yeah let's see. But anyways, uh, I can appreciate the musicality of them, but I wasn't really a fan. But I also, get, I also love the classic rock, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath is my favorite band of all time. ACDC, yeah. all that stuff. So have you ever heard of Ghost? Dude, you know, when I, I heard I Ghost, heard, I, I thought, know. dude, I got to show this band to Troy. Because they, they sound to me like what, if Black Sabbath was still, you know, constantly putting out new music, that's what it would sound like to me. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why. Well, see, I thought like Wolf Mother and fans Wolf like Mother, that yeah. was, was kind of great throwback sound. But, you know, I mean, um, that sound is really always going to come back. Just like fashion does. I mean, yeah. it's, it's never really going to go out <laughs> like of style because it's been around for forty years, so it's it's, it's not going to die. But um, so, what, what was your first band when uh, when you were a teenager? You know, I'm, you had a you had a band. You yeah, and Waco, my, and who else? Who else was in the band? What, what were it called? The very kind of very music? first band that I ever started was with uh, Waco, a dude named Bobby Fajardo. He actually graduated from Baylor for uh, percussion. Like he's a teaches anything anything percussion dude like it's top of the line whenever it comes to that he's really gotten into like uh what they got like hand drums and stuff like that like right. from uh turkey all that kind of right, you know, right. That, ancient instruments yeah, that, yeah he's really getting into all that kind of stuff we jammed with him another dude named mike kathy that i met just from in, in the neighborhood he was the oldest guy in the group that kind of he was 27 and we were all like 15 yeah. <laughs> and he was all like okay so you go here and you go here and you're gonna sing and you're you're gonna play drums you know and then, he was the band yeah he, he directed all of us on what to do and we 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 would cover like sepultura and like stuff like that we were called dogs of war that kind of gave me my first we played pockets i don't know if you remember pockets yeah i remember pockets, in waco yeah. like in bell Mead area yeah. um it, that was like my first intro of just getting to perform and play live in front of I people. I guess you could be underage and play <clears throat> at pockets, I guess. But. Well, at that point in time, I couldn't, but we had Bobby's dad who would come, and he was he catered to all the minors, you know what I mean? Like, Bobby's dad would, took me, Waco, and Bobby to all the gigs. Like, we'd go to Chelsea's and watch the Java Heads and jam out and stuff like that. Like, Chelsea's, just, Chelsea's, it's just something that yeah. we did. Were you, were you here when Chelsea Street Pub was... I think it closed... That was over there off of Bosque and City. It was at the mall. It was at the mall, yeah. Oh, it was at the mall, yeah. yeah it it was gone by the time I moved here in 96. Yeah, it, it didn't last too much longer after I moved here, but I saw some we've riff raff of, and... Yeah, we've had a lot of guests. Lunatic Fringe. Yeah, Lunatic Fringe. Yeah. Some of yeah, those bands. Was, can't remember how many people have talked about playing there. I mean, sorry I missed it, but, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> timing's everything. So I you guess. started off kind that, of in the hard rock <laughs> Yeah, that band was scene. hard rock, and then shortly after that, I guess about... That was about 96, 97, and 99, 2000, we started a band called Niche with um, a dude named, uh, y'all had him in here, T. Aguilar. Yep. Um, his brother actually played drums for me, uh, Victor Aguilar, played drums. A dude named Jamie Sparks played bass. Uh, Matt Garretson, who works at the backyard and yep. Yep. does a lot of stuff in the local music scene here, he played guitar. And then a dude named Nathan Ripper played guitar, and I sang. Um, you can actually find some of that, that stuff it's, uh, online if you look up on YouTube, niche at gyms, and you spell gyms with two M's and a S at the end. N I C H E. N I C H E. Yeah. Yeah. Niche. 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 Are you speaking the French to me now, Troy? His wife is French, you know, so we always get the the French inflection on Troy. You can't help us sometimes, huh? But that that was sort of how would you describe that music? That was Deftony, Deftonish, uh, Limp Biscuit. That new tune, tune, tune down, way tuned down, like yeah. drop C, you know, tune to D, and then drop that from there, you know. Um, we got playing originals and covers. It was all originals. There was no covers in this band, which is that was the turning point in me being like, oh, I can actually write music and people like it. Like, I, I would always think that anytime I would write something new, the only person who's gonna like it was me. Yeah. And that band right there selling cds and being able to travel around and 
we went on. I went on my first tour ever with that band. Um, it was just. just so you guys went experience. on tour, huh? Didn't he, didn't yeah, it was it, it was small. I mean, uh, we did uh, things with like a group called Downside. Yeah, um, I remember Downside. Yeah, and I think we, we Taproot. I don't know if you ever heard Taproot. Or I remember that band. Yeah, Primer Fifty Five. Oh, yeah. yeah, Taproot. Like we we would do a bunch of stuff with those guys. Whenever they would come through Texas, we would just ta- attach onto them and make a little small tour out of it. And it taught us how to eat wish sandwiches and like just make your three bucks last as long as it can <laughs> you know <laughs> that's pretty much it you know sleeping in a van paying some dues yeah that kind of stuff yeah, right well you got to pay your dues man yeah. still paying them, man. <laughs> 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 so what, after niche what happened um niche everybody in niche pretty much uh we all got married and had kids and you know started getting older and life got in the way and Everybody slowly started breaking off and doing their own thing. And I, out of that whole group, actually, I'm the only one who is still pursuing music and doing it as a, well, I mean, I'm kind of taking it as a career now, but it's, nobody ta- nobody else takes it as a career. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm the only one that takes it as that. <laughs> That's a good, well, you have a fallback plan in case you, you know, fall down and break both your wrists. and uh, Plumbing. All right, good. <laughs> I got my plumbing. World needs plumbing. Plum- license. Uh, yeah, right, people good. will always poop. <laughs> <laughs> and stop it up I could always do that so I mean you know it, uh, that's a fallback plan maybe you could start a band called Ruder there you go that's a good name for a band <laughs> people think of naming it after the street here in town <laughs> <You're right. laughs> would you grow up on Ruder <laughs> <laughs> yeah as a matter of fact I did why you asked <laughs> so uh, talk about your songwriting writing process maybe Compare your songwriting process. He always wants to know if you come up with the lyrics first. Or the well, music I mean, lyrics. well, I, I want to know like mine for then me is, and now. Is it, has it changed over time? No, or? nothing's changed pretty much as far as I still. Mm-hmm. I go home late at night. This is when most of my lyrics come out. I get home after a gig or something, two or three in the morning. I sit down with my notepad. A lot of people are using iPads and stuff like that. I still feel the need to scribble down in in actual notebooks. Um, and those sheets can be sold for a lot of money after you're dead and gone. <laughs> so, like, you find a Bob Dylan, you know, when yeah. he wrote, you know. I mean, he, 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 he wrote this song <laughs> and this piece of yellow paper. Yeah. And, and then it sells at an auction for, you know, yeah, 100, 150 grand. There you go. So, yeah, yeah, I encourage you to use the pen and the paper. Well, I do that, and then I'll go and come up with a little riff or whatnot and go back through my lyrics and find something that fits that I like and find a little vocal pattern for it. Then I'll usually go through and circle it. That way I know that I've used it and kind of scratch it out. Then go back and rewrite it in the order that it's going to be. That's kind of how my lyrics come out. Um, I just pick and choose on what what vocal patterns are going to go with what. I have riffs already set out and you know vocal patterns set out and I just kind of see what works. What, what fits together. What fits together, yeah. Yeah. What Lego pieces I can stick together. Yeah. Musical but, but, Lego But your pieces. music now is a little more, uh, I don't know, what would you, how would you describe it? It's, it's less, less heavy? Way less heavy. It's more blues. It, it, I don't know where the blues influence came from. Even the solo playing and stuff like that. Do you like, know how you don't know who Jeff Beck is? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like it, it just it came it it's, it just comes natural, honestly. Like I never taken any scale lessons. I don't know the circle of fifths. I don't I don't know no, any I don't of either. That. I know a couple I of just, chords. I just I, know yeah. what. Whenever somebody's hitting a G, I just know where I, I can see it. it it's just it's. It was like as easy. Monty Montgomery uh, when I saw him down here at the backyard. As he said, "That dude is." He said, it's, "It's in it's in a demolished sea." Demolished. <laughs> 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 I'd never heard of him. I, this is crazy story about Monty Montgomery. I played at a place called Alamo Springs Cafe out in Fredericksburg, Texas. I mean, it's like, it, what do they say? It's inconveniently located, like in the middle of nowhere for your inconvenience. Like it's literally, You're but right. it's packed all the time. <clears throat> this place is packed. Where is it? It's in Fredericksburg, Texas. You'll go like you're going to Lukenbach and take Old San Antonio. So it's not Road. in town. It's out of town. It's like 20 miles outside of okay. outside cool. of Fredericksburg. It's actually in a place called Alamo Springs. Is, is yeah, the name yeah, of the yeah, name yeah, of the town. Um, <coughs> so I, I get there, you know, and I meet the people and the lady running the registers, Monty Montgomery's sister, but I didn't know it. And I've been booking with her, and you know, she's she's like, man, you got to meet my brother. The way you play that acoustic guitar and you put distortion on it, you got to meet my brother. You have to meet my brother. And I'm like, who's your brother? And she's like, Monty Montgomery. And I'm like, okay. 
didn't know, you know, didn't know who he was. So we that we play that night, and the next night we end up playing at the R Bar in Marble Falls, Texas. And there's a place called the Uptown Theater right next door. Guess who's playing? Monty. Monty Montgomery. And you saw that show. This I know. well, no, that he come out from the back and came down and watched three or four of our songs. And then messaged me on Facebook later and was like, hey, you guys did a good job. My sister told me about awesome. you and stuff like that. So I actually went to go catch a show the first time that he played at the backyard when it rained all hardcore yeah. and they put yeah. him inside. I went and caught like three or four songs and the last last part of his set. It was amazing. I got to hang out with him and talk with him about his sister and stuff like that. It was really cool. He, he is uh, so incredible. And, you know, I saw him um, just a couple you know, weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. And um, he was funny. He was great. He's, he's got a great stage presence self-effacing kind of thing but um he uh you know he, he's he plays this same I, every time i've seen him i've seen him a ton of times he's got this alvarez guitar and i i comment is like he must have willie nelson's guitar tag <laughs> because you know that trigger guitar that willie has has been kept alive for the last 20 years through I don't know what he puts on it, but Monty does look like it's been shellacked or yeah. something. But he plays the same Alvarez. He plays it. It's got those dents in it from the yeah. It's got yeah exactly. And, so and he plays through a you know a board and or pedals and stuff. But um, and it's every time I've seen him, he plays the same guitar beginning to end. I've never seen him pick up another yeah, guitar. Switch. So so he's uh, <coughs> I guess it's a good plug for Alvarez guitars. <laughs> <laughs> You can get any kind of tone out of one of them. <laughs> yeah, <guys>. exactly. <laughs> well, that's cool, man. Well, I'm, I'm still waiting for him to message me back because I sent him a message on Facebook and he has not responded. So did he even right, read well, it? Did you? Probably not. Probably you, not. You didn't even see the. It was right down. before he was coming to town, uh, and <laughs> I said we were going to try to get him in the shed. Yeah. So maybe you can hook us up, man. Man, I'll, you guys I'll contact. BFFs now. I'll talk uh, to his sister and see if I can. Maybe we can catch him on Christmas whenever he comes into town. We can just go over there. All right. <laughs> gotcha. Hell, I'll cook a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of cooking a turkey, man, why don't you cook us up a song? Word, I'm down with that. Let's All right, let's do it. This is a song called Stop Saying. It's uh, written about my first ex-wife. <laughs> How many ex-wives do you plan on having? Um, at least 42. <laughs> All right. Put a two in front of that, 242. But um, it's I wrote this that extended vacation I was telling you guys that I didn't want to take. It's a song called Stop Saying. The situation calls my heart. I think of you from time to time. You worried me for way too long. Should have been gone. You want I could be here. You know I really want this. The precious kiss is what I really miss. There's no need to trip. I should have got this. I'm moving on. And this is gone for way too long. Stop saying, stop saying I'm wrong. I wasn't even playing your game Stop saying, stop saying my name I'm out to blame The way the words come out your mouth The same things you know nothing about You ask why the fun's undone Disconnected And I'll never be the one I'm moving on And this is gone for way too long Stop saying Stop saying I'm wrong Stop saying, stop saying my name. Yeah, yeah. No. Stop saying.
Lovely. <laughs> All right. Woo. All right. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. You talked about the song you just played. Uh, just say what's it called? Stop saying. Stop saying. Yeah. You said you wrote that <laughs> on a vacation. Yeah, six, it was a six-year vacation. It was, you a, had. It was an extended six-year vacation. I didn't want to take. It was one of those vacations that just thrown upon you. I think we can all get exactly what you're talking about, <laughs> but we won't, we won't get into all that. Do, but how did you did you write songs? I, at the that whole time? the whole time I was there. Did you have a guitar? No, no not for the, the not for the first three three years. Um, this is really crazy. I would I took a piece of cardboard and like cut it to where it was the size of a fretboard, and I drew little black lines on it. And put little, you know, just made a fretboard to where I could hold it, and I could hear it. Like I could literally hold my fingers on it, strum it, and hear it. So I would, I wrote my whole first album like that. And then towards the last three years, I got put on a unit where there, you know, I could go and play guitar. I worked for the chaplain and stuff like that. So I got to play religious music. So I actually got to get a guitar in my hand and actually play the stuff that I had been writing before. And I wrote a. It's about an eight or nine track CD while I was in there. I guess about two weeks after I got out in 2008, I started recording it and finished it in 2010. So what did you, um, <clears throat> while you are in the joint, what did you uh, get positively uh, out of that? Uh, I, I grew up. <laughs> did you? I was, I was just acting like a little idiot, man. I didn't want to, I didn't want to work. I didn't want to do anything that was just that was normal you know what I mean I just I, you want to make some quick cash yeah that's all it was about it was just I, and everybody's always like oh you were addicted to drugs and I wasn't addicted to drugs man I was addicted to money easy money just you know not having to work for it when I went in there man it it just opened up my eyes to actually seeing because because I was selling drugs so I never really thought I was hurting anybody I was like it's a victimless crime these people are coming and buying it you know they're, they're right. doing it to themselves but I never thinking really, about it from you or from somebody else. Yeah, that's what I would tell myself. That was my permission statement. But I never realized like who are they robbing to get that twenty bucks from that they brought to me, like and that that was something else that was brought to my attention during the course of me being gone. You know, it, just everything is a domino effect. You know, just because that person didn't instantly affect you, they affected somebody, whether it was their grandmother or yeah. somebody else like that. You know, just opened up my eyes to just. I just don't want to be part of that filth anymore. You know? Did you get any good counseling while you're in there about you know? Obviously, I took a I took one class. You don't want recidivism, but I took I mean, one class called Bridges to Life, man, and that it was a religious based program, and that was they just put you in front of your victims. You know, like if you 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 got you were in there for a DWI, they put you in there with somebody who was either mangled by a drunk driver or something well, like so that. Close so, family so affected killed. by yeah, drunk yeah, drivers. Like, so somebody, you yeah. you get to see who you're affecting and I got to talk to a lady that or her brother it was her brother I think I wanted to say it was her uncle it was her brother he um got addicted to crack real bad and stuff like that and uh he he was stealing from her mom he stole her wedding ring she had all these pawn tickets man you know she was like this is my mom's wedding ring this is you know this is other stuff that was like mem you know like you shouldn't even have pawned it I mean it was something that meant more than that you know yeah <clears throat> and she oh, was like, yeah, you, she was like, you may not have known whenever he was coming to bring you that twenty bucks where he got it from, but he got it from my mom, and he got it, you know, and it just made me realize, well, whoa, you know, I can't, I can't be a part of this little circle anymore. Can't have that in your, I just, over you. All right. I just say that, and the the whole six year vacation thing was just terrible, man. I mean, I like hanging out with dudes and all, but. Man, <laughs> not, <those things. laughs> not that much. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, you talked a little earlier about uh, where I'm from, San Saba. There's a little bar there called Diggs, which uh, we played a long time ago. We played a couple of times and I shot a music video there. And uh, so, but uh, you, did you, you played at Diggs a couple of times? Yeah, I played at Diggs a few times. Uh, some friends of mine, uh, they got a little group called the Back Row Centers. I'll go and out, out there and play lead guitar with them, a little country band. Then um, there was a girl that I was playing guitar for for a while named Courtney Reed, and we played out there at a like a goat cook off or something that they had out there at one time. Um, but everybody loves that video out there where we're from, man. Yeah. Liquor, beer, and bullshit video. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it won. What? Oh yeah, you won an award for it. Video that, of the year, man. I knew it would. I knew it would. So yeah, it's, it's pretty much the best country song ever written. I I, I put it up there pretty, right pretty with close. Um, pretty close. <laughs> pretty close. I like that. <laughs> I think Willie's still trying to write a song to top that. Yeah, yeah. Well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He does have that one. It's a pretty new song. Uh, oh, I can't remember what it's 
call now. Something about Get High or something. I'm well, sure. Aren't all Willie Nelson songs <laughs> about Get High? Well, they are now. <laughs> God bless Willie. Um, yeah, he's, he's going to be in the shed soon, folks. Yeah, uh, we got some construction starting next door, so it's going to get a little... Uh, you know, going to hear some background noise. I think someone's moving in next door, Troy. Well, man, uh, well, there goes our plans to uh, expand the shed. Yeah, I was going to buy that lot. The shed? Yeah, I was going to, I was going to buy that lot and just push the shed out, like and <laughs> build a tunnel to the to the house next door. But anyways, um, so divide. Uh, what do you got coming up in the future? What's what's your plans? I, mean, <coughs> I know you're gigging pretty solid, but. Uh, are you, you, you have a record? band or is it just you? I have a drummer right now. I'm looking for a bass player. So if anybody out there is, uh, plays bass and is looking to join a new group, give me a holler. Um, I I do have a drummer right now. We've been we've been rocking quite regularly. He actually is the guy that plays for the Back Row Centers. He plays drums for them also. Um, it's just us two right now. It's, that's it. I didn't bring him with me this weekend. Because uh, we don't have room for a drum set. Yeah. We're well, gonna, not only that, yeah. like the the hippodrome, they they don't, which I'm playing tomorrow night. If you guys are out and about, uh, be playing the hippodrome in Waco, Texas, at seven. Unfortunately, this isn't live, so it'll be a broadcast well after you've left. The oh, hippodrome. okay. Well, then, yeah, I'll be, you missed it if you, you didn't, missed if it. You didn't if you weren't if, there. If I you guess. waited to hear this, and you missed it. <laughs> but talk, uh, you said you uh, when you were when you were on your vacation, you wrote eight or nine songs. Yeah. Where did you record it? Do you have your own um, setup to record no, music with? Or? I, I, I do at my house. That's how I get them all down, the ideas. Uh, I'll go through and uh, put a rough track down. and I, I use a... I'll either beatbox... I have a looper, which is what I use live. And I'll beatbox the beat and bring it in and out and ride the drum track and then come through and record the song and then take those ideas. and So I don't go into the studio and spend... A ton of money like trying to do backing vocals and harmonies and stuff like that I try to get everything all down at the house so that way whenever I go record it's really fast and this first album I used I recorded with T T Aguilar mm -hmm. at, over at his studio yeah the, I think he's calling it Virtu for two yeah, I've been over there it's he's, he's, um, he's making it happen yeah it's pretty nice D did you see that 24 foot canvas they had over there 24 foot canvas painting Oh, with the art show that yeah. he did, I, I he posted some stuff about why they were painting it. Yeah. I watched that. And that is amazing. I went over there for an art show that uh, he told me about um, probably three months ago. It was really good, and and he's really involved. He's a good artist, and and uh, you know, guys like him are really trying to you know help Waco not only establish you know music and stuff like that, but just art, art in general. Art yeah, art in general, which is good because he. Um, so when you He's, go into when you go into the studio with 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 T, do, do, does he put his two cents into what yeah, you're that, doing? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Uh, T and I, T's actually my cousin. So we, anytime you know we go to Christmas, you know we go to the grandparents' house. You know you got me, Victor, Tony, everybody there. Like there's a good group of us, about eight or nine of us. Man, that's so much cooler than when I went to grandma's house. <laughs> <laughs> that could actually, you know, we I all sit there Lawrence and play. I think Lawrence Welk was playing in the background, <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, we were uh, eating eating up a storm, but yes. Now, you get us all like together, that. man, I mean, that's what we do, you know, Tony will bring the cajon and bring the guitar, and the next thing you know, we're all jamming out. It, so, he and I, we started out, I mean, we writing music together, I mean, from the get-go, it's always been that way. He's always been a big influence as far as pushing me and you know, just showing me the outlets and things that I can do with my music or whatnot. Because I, when I first started, it was just something I did in his garage. He played in a band called uh, Phylum, I think it was at the time. He had another band called Sandcastle before that. And I would just go and watch him play. And he, whenever everybody would leave, he, we would sit there and I would pick up the guitar and, and, and jam with him. And it, you know, just molded me over time, you know, just got, got turned me into the musician I am today, honestly. Which and then you'd, you'd leave and have a turkey sandwich, and then you come back and play some more? Turkey sandwiches all the way. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> talk, talk about the, uh, the style of music you're playing now. I know you t right now you're doing some acoustic stuff for us, but you're doing some uh, some loops and some uh, some other uh, little more extravagant things with your music. Yeah, uh, like there's some of the... When I first started Divod, I had I had a full band. I had a guy named Jared Richards that was playing drums for me. He played ba He played drums for a band called Bernie Midget. Uh, death metal band while they were around in the uh, early 2000s um, dude named Brandon Riggs that played bass 
James Fodge that played uh, lead guitar for Pensive played for me at the time. And uh, and this is while you were still in Waco. Yeah, this is this is 2008, 9, during the course of me recording that album. And um, I started writing heavier tunes, you know, with, with distortion, like getting away from the whole bluesy sound and getting more Breaking Benjamin, you know, stuff like that, you know, screaming every now and then, kind of, you know, distorted breakdown parts. And then when I left here and I moved to Lano, I didn't know anybody. And I still, you know, still wanted to keep these songs that I had. So I ended up just remixing them with, with loops and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would just have to show you one to, for you to hear it, like to, to understand what I'm talking about by loop. But if you buy the new album, it's got Should Have Known, which is recorded the original way. And then it's unlisted, but there's a secret track on there. And it's Should Have Known the way that I play it now. If you Good come deal. to see me live, so you get to hear it both ways. Either so way, you, you can hear your music. Uh, where, where can you uh, Reverb Nation? Um, Reverb Nation right now has two tracks up. Um, yeah, I heard those. Great, uh, yeah, great songs. I believe it's uh, paid for by you and Stop Saying. And then if you go to SoundCloud, I have a track that I did with a rapper here in town. He goes by the Kid. Um, I wrote a song <laughs> while I was on that vacation. And I was going to play it for you guys. This is a song called Ooh Wee. And uh, I met a girl while I was in there. She was actually a guard that worked there. And uh, we kind of hit it off. And, like, I wanted to get out of jail. But, you know, obviously not being around women for so long, you you got to have an outlet some way. You know what I mean? Like, So I wrote a song, man. And, it, it like, I, I oh, had to. That was a, <clears throat> a song to uh, lubricate. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, and, and, and once you hear it, you, you'll be like, okay, yeah, you really were missing, like, women a lot. Like, and, and my thing was, is, like, I told myself, I was like, the f I wanted a rap part in it because it, it broke off. And instead of every one of my songs has that breakdown in it and it becomes a solo. And I, it's just, it, it's that same formula. Yeah. And I was like, man, I want something different. You want to change it up? Yeah, I wanted to change it up. So I was like, the first rapper that I run into when I was living in Lano, you know, and I was the like, first rapper I run into when I go to Waco, that's who I'm using. And uh, I went out to the, that hot HOT thing they do in Austin the car club they do a car show okay it's, i don't remember exactly what it's called the heat wave texas heat wave that's what it was i went up there and i ran into a few other rappers and they were telling me they were coming back to waco and to meet up with them here and when i got back here i ran into the kid and i was like that's it i'm using you you know what i mean you're the first rapper i ran into this is what we're doing so i kidnapped him that night and ended up taking him back to the apartment where i was recording that song at and uh shoved him in the closet made him Record a verse for me. <laughs> How did he do? He did. Uh, considering it was on the spot. Did you write the lyrics for it? No, he man. Wrote the, he, he, wrote he wrote the lyrics on the spot. So he, like kind of freestyle. He freestyled it, it yeah. and it, it dude. He I, listened to the song. Listened to the lyrics. Li listened to the lyrics. Yeah. To I mean, and there's some parts on there where, like, I mean, he he took these words, you know, like, uh, and it's crazy how it plays in my head. She's covered in flowers, touching herself on the bed. He took those kinds of lyrics and pretty much made his own rap verse you know from it from the way that i was talking about this girl you know and just turned it into his own little way well that's badass <laughs> <laughs> it's it's ooh wee <laughs> yes ooh -wee. Ooh -wee. and people ask me too they're like what'd you come up with the name and i'm like dude just think about it ooh wee like how do you use that word <laughs> ooh wee yeah it's always something good so what what are your long-term plans are you gonna stay in lano or are you gonna yeah i own a house there man uh we own like a little half city block. My dad bought both houses, gave me one, and he ended up moving to Indonesia like three months ago. <laughs> wow, that's. For, uh, what, why did he move there? But like I was saying, he, he, he moved to Lano and, to retire and ended up running out of money. Like most uh, people, you know. It, yeah, well, Lano real estate has probably gone up significantly oh, it's, it's in, the, in the last 20 years because it's big retirement area. Yeah, so he ran out of money and was like, oh, God, I don't have any money. I got to go back to work. And he's an aviation consultant. He built, you know, helps mold aviation companies, you know. Cool. So he went to that, some crappy, like, ZW rated, <laughs> like, very, very low rated crappy airline. He's supposed to help him. So he's in Indonesia? In, in Jakarta, Indonesia. Wow. Well, you got to mind your P's and Q's in Jakarta because you can't spit on the sidewalk. There. Yeah, I heard about that. They'll get, they'll get your ass for that. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> well, good luck. I, I, we're supposed to go over there here pretty soon, a couple yeah. months. Maybe I'll go over there and play some shows. Yeah, 
Take your axe. <laughs> They're going to sure. tri- trip out on me. <laughs> yeah. They'll love you, man. Well, uh, let's do one more. What do you think? Because these guys over here are making a lot of noise. Well, maybe they can keep a beat. Yeah. Well, you know, if they hammer to the tune, then... It might just work. We might get something going on. Are you going to do ooey? Or yeah, I'm going to do ooey. Are you going to wrap it, too? Yeah, I'm going to wrap it. Oh, wrap right. it. Wrapping paper. This is a... Uh, song called Ooey. I wrote while I was on one of those extended vacations. <laughs> Talked about it a little earlier. My heart stops when she enters the room. It's a secret kisses me every time that she moves And the subtlety, she puts herself in my way And I'm constant wondering today it will be the day And she's top notch, all the fetal flaws that I want um, And she speaks so soft, she licks her lips every time that she talks can't I wrap myself around your fingers? Won't stop, girl. Please let me feel ya. Ooh, we you're making me crazy. Thinking about the days till you're in front of me. Oh, I slack. Words I can't even talk. She entices me with every little step that she walks And it's crazy how it plays in my head She's covered flowers touching herself on the bed Now she's pushing She's pouring with sweat As she whispers she loves it As she rubs on my chest Can't I Wrap myself around your fingers Won't stop Girl, please let me feel ya Ooh, you're making me crazy Thinking about the days till you're in from me The little mama's a time Biggest one of a kind All I can dream about is making your mind I'm gonna do things to you that I know you would like Coming up on this baby and riding like a bike Cause you know it's so wrong when it feels so right Maybe we come together like the Demi Snipe Take a look at my eyes and you tell me what you want Telling me to stop it, that's not really what you want No, I'm really what you want, girl, so don't even lie This is a me in your dreams, in between your thighs This is the time of our lives, you're my fantasy world Baby, we can come together, you can be my girl So how about it, baby? Can't I wrap myself around your fingers? Won't stop, girl, please let me feel ya Ooh, we you're making me crazy Thinking about the days till you're in front of me That was awesome. All right. Thank you. All right, well, uh, another great In the Shed, In the Can. I think so, and uh, we want to thank Divad for being here tonight with us, hanging out on this cool Man, October night. feels great. It feels so good. <laughs> I'm glad uh, you guys invited me now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, two so. weeks ago would have sucked. But anyway, thanks again, man. Yeah, thanks, guys. Anytime. Uh, all right. We are uh, done with this show, and uh, we will see everybody next time in the shit. In the shit. Thanks.